Hello, I hope you are doing okay. Okay, so this is the part three of my tale in leaving the Seventh day Adventist Church and embracing the gospel. And this is the final part to my tale. If you had watched part one and watched part two, part two in particular, I had ended by saying that there was one doctrine that I grappled with which was the Sabbath, right? And um, the reason for that is, is that the Seventh-day Adventist Church, they, when it comes to disagreements, you can disagree on almost everything except for Ellen White being a false prophet, the investigative judgment, which is the core doctrine, and worse, the Sabbath. I think Ellen White, I think in terms of doctrine, it would be Sabbath, then investigative judgment. But Ellen White is a, a total um, different thing there. So you'd have, in terms of disagreement, top three, you will have Ellen White, then Sabbath, then investigative judgment. Right? Now, due to this factor of, 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 um, of what, due to what Seventh-day Adventists teach, on the Sabbath, in that they say a Sunday law will be passed in the last days, a universal Sunday law wherein all men will be, where wherein all persons will be forced to keep Sunday holy, and whosoever chooses not to keep Sunday holy, they will be killed, right? Persecuted and killed. And those who chose to yield to that law, they will receive the mark of the beast. This is what they teach. And also, they also teach that because there will be faithful Adventists during that time who will not yield to the Sabbath, all the world will be against them. All the world will be against them. And the, 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 the light, God will send light from heaven and empower Seventh-day Adventist Church to preach what they call the three angel message which is to warn about the mark of the beast which is Sunday worship and it, they also go on to say that when God pour, when they have the, what they call the outpouring of the Holy Ghost they will be able to declare this doctrine with power and might and and thousands, millions will be converted to Adventism. Though some, some from Sunday, from Sunday churches, and even some from Sabbath churches who do not have the full essence of the truth will come over to Seventh-day Adventist Church. However, there will be some who will not yield, who, who will not yield to the light that the Seventh-day Adventists will spread. And um, these persons will seek to slay and persecute Seventh-day Adventists. And this includes relatives of Adventists, relatives and friends who say, hey, there are the Adventists over there. And, they, uh, uh, and, 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 and so you find that the, 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 law, law, the, the law will be against Seventh-day Adventists. Lawmen should say will be against Seventh-day Adventists. Right, so this is what this is what um this is what they teach that we are going to hunt persons are going to hunt them down and kill them off for, 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 for the things that they teach. And I should note this that this is one of the marks of a cult are these counterfeit religions or movements is that they have a us versus them kind of thing wherein they think that everyone is against them and everything is centered about them. The Bible itself teaches a lot about their group and it's almost as if certain distinctive prophecies, certain prophecies in the Bible are directly related to them. This is how these movements think in themselves. So they have a narcissistic thing about them which is very much not Christ-like. Right? And um, that being said, due to the dynamics of the Sabbath and what Seventh-day Adventists teach on the Sabbath. While I was able to see the errors in nearly all their teachings, for some reason I could not give up the Sabbath. Now, 
I believe I would have stated in my second video, either my first or second, I believe it's my second video, yes, that two, so two former Adventists I had spoken with who had left the church and abandoned the Sabbath. One of them, whose name is Christopher Buckley, he had posted a video about his journey in leaving Seventh-day Adventist Church. If you type in Christopher Buckley on YouTube, you should find it. Right? And I spoke with him and his wife about it, but for some reason, I still I still disbelieve um, the, the, the idea that Sabbath is not mandatory for Christians at the time. No. It so happened that his wife introduced me to Dr. Clinton Baldwin, who is a former Adventist that taught at Northern Caribbean University in Jamaica, right? And um, he had a program that was held in Portmore, Jamaica. And she invited me to this, to this, to this um, program or the seminar, whatever you, you want to call it. She did not tell me however that it was it was him, he was the host of it because I, 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 I would say she used wisdom in that because she as a farmer knows the mindset of Adventists. That once it, it is she she had told me that it's him, I would I would most likely not have gone to the, 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 the program due to prejudice that was created in my mind while I was still in the Seventh day Adventist church. However, I went there, saw some points that he made, but still, I still did not see the full light as yet. So I told her that, hey, while he has some good points, there are still some stuff that I can't reconcile. So I still can't see or embrace what you guys have embraced. Now, that being said, I had, to, I, I had got a pamphlet from him to read. I held on to the pamphlet but did not read it as yet at the time. Right? No. It so happened that sometime in my sometime throughout um that meeting I began to think to myself, looking and looking and observing my Adventist colleagues, how they relate to one another and looking at my experience when I first started to um to, to question the doctrines right and um, I'm saying to myself as a matter of fact before be, 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 before I had even reached I had I had even reached the point in discovering the errors of Ellen White there was some time um, when I when I had asked the questions about the anti trinity and stuff that I, I was thinking to myself how can this actually be the true church and yet they treat people like this they talk about Sabbath and diet laws and so forth and them being the remnant church called and set apart among uh, from all different churches and yet still they are so cold at heart. Now let me make a disclaimer here. Not all Adventists are like that. I mean I've met wonderful Adventists and, and um, who, 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 who treats me well even now. But the problem is that a vast amount of them are like this. And it plagued my mind from, from, um, from that time. How could this be the remnant church? So much that I prayed often to God, questioning him about it, saying, saying to him that if I never knew that this was the remnant church, uh, if this wasn't the remnant church, I would have left. But if I leave, I would, I, I would forfeit my salvation, which I, which I can't do. So I suck it up. Right, I suck it up and, and ignored it and went along just the same. And this is it with all cults. They will be mistreated and find a lot of things that they are not in agreement with. But due to the idea of, of, of the church having no salvation outside of the church, many persons in these movements choose to remain because of that, because of this factor. They feel that, that like if they leave, they will be forfeiting their salvation and this was what held me trapped in Adventism until I, I, I saw the link which I made mention of which I made mention of in my in my second video I believe 
right? Now, regarding the Sabbath, I still began to observe my colleagues and so forth, how, how they respond to other laws and so forth, and it reached a point that I began to scratch my head. But there was one particular individual who, um, who I was well acquainted with while I was in the church who caused me to have more doubts on the Seventh-day Adventist teaching on the Sabbath. Why that is so is because I bought a Bible before, right, on the Sabbath. And um, this individual tackled me about buying the Bible on the Sabbath. Now, I really needed that Bible because it was a reference Bible. I was digging for reference Bible for a long time and I spot it in a store and I couldn't miss the chance because it was limited. I couldn't miss the opportunity to take to take the Bible because as I as I mentioned in my first video I was very zealous and I really wanted to dig into the scriptures and have and have an aid to help me and that Bible I saw as something good which I I just couldn't miss the opportunity this individual however tackled me about about that and um, it bothered my mind because I remember tackling that same individual about other stuff that the Bible says we ought not to do, which are taken very lightly. And from then on, I, I really began to question. I began to have doubts about the Sabbath. Not only that, I've, I've seen persons mistreated. You understand? Um, by, by, by a lot of Seventh-day Adventists. And I'm saying to myself, how is it that these people are all about Sabbath so much? And when it comes to being careful not to hurt your neighbor's feelings, being careful to love them as yourself. How is it that these things are not, are not taken into consideration? And as far as the Bible is concerned, it is more important than the Sabbath. Right? Now, to add to that, there was one individual whom I, whom I knew as well in Adventism that had, you know, um, issues in terms of health issues. And, um, numerous occasions that persons was denied help because of the sabbaths right i witnessed that for myself and it began when i saw these things my doubts began to arise because i remember where the scripture teach about about um scribes and pharisees their behavior were of the same order as what i'm seeing within at the, 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 the adventist church right and I began to have doubts. I began to see them as a manifestation of the scribes and Pharisees of old. Now, mind you, you know, not all of them are like this. There are many wonderful Adventists. But my problem is, is that there are many more. There are more Adventists who are like that than those that aren't. And it bothered my mind. It caused me to question little by little. I began to question the Sabbath. And I told myself that perhaps I'm going to have to visit revisit the, 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 the sabbath issue right because if they are wrong on so many other things why is it not possible for them to be wrong on that and the actions are are, 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 are there to show right no while 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 they try to keep the sabbath right and still fail at it because there is not a soul who can keep the sabbath accurately in this day and age and i'll prove that i'll show that in my other videos so they try to keep it to the best of their abilities. They, they, they try their best to do it. But they don't try. They don't put as equal effort. They don't put equal effort with keeping other laws as they do with the Sabbath. And little by little I began to feel as though if I really take Seventh-day Adventists seriously, I'll be closer to hell than to heaven. Because how can you take such a law as so serious and not take the one that says love your neighbor as yourself equally as serious i i started to say to myself if this is what the sabbath does to to um to um to persons right looking at scripture where we talk about the scribes and prices and this is what i see happen to them that are all about sabbath and law and so forth i'm starting to think that maybe the sabbath thing is just really not for christians because if keeping if in keeping the ten commandments right makes you different from other christians how is it that it is not being shown 
I'm, as a matter of fact, I know many persons from Sunday who are Sunday worshippers who are not like that at all. And my it, uh, a little by little, cognitive dissonance start to arise in my mind, right? And that and 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 here's the thing: if you read Galatians chapter three, I'm not going to read it out fully. Galatians chapter three verses verses two to five you will see that the law and the spirit it's not compatible so when a person is all about law you'll find that the spirit has no place to work in them and this is why these individuals are often time cold at heart when they're all about law 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 which is one of the most powerful testimonies that the law the torah is not for Christians because if it's for Christians and it causes Christians to act in such a manner one should easily see why it is not for Christians and I'll show these things in my upcoming videos now again I started to question the Sabbath because of the actions that I see from Seventh-day Adventist Church and um, I must say before I, 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 I continue on that is that there's a reason why the Seventh-day Adventist Church takes the Sabbath so seriously and I'm going to show you why it's because of Ellen White and something that something that she that she that she that she is that, that she tells them I'm gonna share two quotes one of them I'm going to read now and tell you where it's from the second one I'll tell you but I'll post on the description area for you to see it fully right in this quote coming from signs from from the periodical signs of the time it says if the Sabbath is accepted the rest of the commands in the Decalogue will be obeyed for no one can truly keep the Sabbath and disregard one precept of the law what did she say? No one can truly keep the Sabbath and disregard one principle of the law. This comes from Signs of the Times, as I said before, March 31, 1898. And the title is The Sabbath of the Lord. So that shows with the way the Sabbath is concerned, all the other laws hangs on the Sabbath. This is what she's saying. So once you keep the Sabbath accurately, you will keep every single law. I could stop right there and I know what you're thinking in your mind that this woman is definitely a false prophet. I know that what that's what because this is direct contradiction of the Bible. Many passages of scripture, I'm sure you know, that teaches that love is the greatest commandment. I don't even need to quote that passage of scripture because every Christian knows this passage of scripture. And I'm not going to quote it because you know it, right? So she's saying that the Sabbath, once you keep it, you will keep every other law. So and it hangs all the law. That is what she's saying indirectly. Hence, why Sabbath, why Adventists are this way. You get what I'm saying? So having the cognitive dissonance in my mind, I said to myself, I have to revisit the Sabbath. Right? I watch programs religious and religious hard talk at Jamaican TV station. And I revisited and look at a program done, an interview done with Else Thunder Lariston. You can type that on YouTube and you'll find you'll find his interview program, that program and watched it. And I watched his debates. Right on the Sabbath. And I watched I re I re I rewatched Dr. Baldwin's interview with Ian Boyen as well. Right? look at some stuff that they are saying and then i said to myself i'm gonna go and study the sabbath once again and this time while dr Baldwin had given me a program to read i told myself i'm not going to read the program because i don't want to, it to be said that um someone i'm following this or that person secondly because the sabbath is such a critical issue i wanted to ensure that it's just the spirit of the Lord is guiding me and I'm not reading anyone's ideas or so forth. So I, having done that, I approach the scriptures again using hermeneutics and exegesis, the new principle that first 
help me to see the errors of Adventism. I applied these principles, gathered all the, the relevant texts that spoke of the law, the covenants, the Sabbath, circumcision, dietary laws, etc. And that was it for me. I began to saw things in a light that I never saw it before, studying it through and through contextually. As I, I even end up seeing texts that I that, that I never see exist in the Bible. And I never knew exist should say, sorry, I never knew existed in the Bible. Because all my time reading Adventist literature, I've never seen them appear in their literature before. And I should know, for in my first video I mentioned how much how passionate I was as an Adventist and how zealous I was. Right? So I read every quarterly lesson. So if there was any, I would have seen it. So not only that, I see some of the scriptures that I know they used before to support their arguments. But now I'm seeing that these passages that they use, they cannot hold water. I mean, they are weak. You understand? And many, many of which are taken out of context. And out of that, I jump for joy, saying that I'm finally free. I can pack my bags and leave the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And so I left June 2018. Right? And having left, I revisited the doctrine of the Trinity as well. Remember, you know, I had been brainwashed by Ellen White's early teaching and started to believe the semi and heresy that was dealt with long ago in the history of the church. You can research that yourself. The, the Aryan, Aryan teachings, right? And revisiting the Trinity using exegesis and hermeneutics, looking back at the text that caused me to doubt the Trinity in the first place. When I revisit them contextually, I'm saying, Kismar, for you to believe this anti-Trinitarian teachings that is going on in the Seventh-day Adventist Church, you have to use proof texts in which involve cut and slice in text and takes in them out of context. Not only that, you have to use eisegesis where you read into the text and plug in your ideas into it. And that was then I say, Trinity. I'm now a Trinitarian. Right? And this is my story, bridging of how I realized the truth and came out of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. You may be asking why I've taken this long to record this video, but my reason for that, my reason for taking this long is due to the fact that at the time when I realized the truth through and through and having left the Seventh-day Adventist Church, I got very angry, bitter, and filled with rage. In my second video, I mentioned how, when I was talking to Christopher Buckley and I asked him, I, I was even saying to his wife that, why is your husband like this? He has such an attitude. You, you really need to talk to him about his attitude because all I'm seeing from him is impatience, intolerance, and anger and so forth coming from him. So I was, in a sense, judging him, right? But when I found out the truth, I can say to say, I was by far worse than him when it comes to anger and rage. I mean, I lashed out and I bashed and I bashed and I bashed the Seventh-day Adventist Church far to a far greater degree than he did. And you know, it really shows me that we, we should really try to understand persons rather than judging them because it is so very easy to judge. But if, 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 if we seek to understand persons, right? you'll find that that is far better but here I, because here i am judging him and i end up ended up being worse than him you understand and now i and him are like <laughs> like best of buddies now and he's a he's far 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 different from what i saw at that first time when i talked to him i can say that he's healed to a degree so the, the anger is not so much there anymore and so it is with me. I, um, I, I was very angry. And so I could not have done any video from last year because there would be nothing out of, coming out of my mouth but hate. You understand? But I've healed from all of that. I've healed from it. I had to receive counseling because there was a time when I was very, I, I, I got very depressed. Right? And I had to the point that I, I was at work and I felt 
a feeling in my body that wasn't normal. I know that something isn't right. My head felt, felt, felt I, I, I knew it was stress. And so I had to receive counseling. And having received counseling, my counselor told me to go and visit churches and so forth. Build an, a network because I have lost many friends um, throughout my, 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 my journey. That's a natural thing when you're coming out of these movements. You lose friends and so forth. So I lose a lot of friends. And you know, um, he told me to build back, fi find new friends, visit churches and build a, net build a network, go out have fun and so forth and 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 when I have finished visited churches I should select one among them which um one among them which which is which 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 is most suitable for me. And what he said is that I should look at the doctrines and the doctrines that I find that I'm in um, agreement with I should look at the core doctrines and, and and, 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 and I should choose among them which one of them suits my convictions, my doctrinal convictions. But he advised me that I would not find, it's very unlikely that I'd find a church that I'm in a total agreement with. But I should see, so as long as I'm in agreement with the main and essential stuff, right, I should choose that church that better suits, suits me. And so... I went back to the church that I started with, Church of the F Church of the First Barn, where I was baptizing, Church of the First Barn, Portmore Fellowship. I went back to that church and um, I received the right hand of fellowship. So now I'm a I'm an official member of that church, right? And so this is my tale. This is my tale on leaving the Seventh Day Adventist Church from Christianity to counterfeit to Christianity again. Right? And this is my this is my tale. Um the experience was rather a bitter and sweet one. I explained to you the bitter experience. Right? One that I do not want anyone to encounter. The sweet experience is having having found having no under, understanding the gospel of grace. Right? I'm at a place now where I can say I can accurately defend my position on matters of faith. Whereas I could not do so while I was an Adventist because there are several things that were blurred to me that I couldn't comprehend in its fullest sense due to the contradictions and so forth. And so I'm happy now, right, for the truth that I have found. Truly, it, it feels so wonderful to be, to be liberated. And so now, God has placed it in my heart to do this do these videos and to farm this ministry and so now i want to serve right and i want to serve the evangelical circle of churches which i'm a part of now in that i want to call their attention to these movements and to equip them on how to combat and deal with these movements not only this i want i want to strengthen them personally right so that they are able to accurately defend their position from scripture and I want to minister to those who are a part of these movements as, as well so that they that, 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 that they may come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ right for as it is they believe that they have uh, that they have the truth but this is, this is not so, and I, and I intend to prove this throughout my ministry, right? Last but not least, persons who are looking to give their lives to the Lord, but do not know where to go, seeing that there are so many different denominations saying different things. My ministry is also for this purpose, that persons can know which can decide which church to go and which church not to go, right? That being said, again, <laughs> I, I ended up going over 25 minutes, but rest assured, I will get it, I will get it right eventually and keep my videos shorter. I thank you once again for having listened, listening to my, to my video, right? Do look forward for more videos like this. And I, I, I kindly ask now for you to like, subscribe, 
and click on the little on the little bell icon that's at the subscription here the sub that, that that is right next to the subscription so that you can receive notifications whenever i post whenever i post whenever i make new uploads right and the comments where 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 necessary i do thank you again for listening bye bye now